That offense was clicking. Woo! And what were they, 0 for 16 <laughs> runners in scoring position at one point? But, uh, you know, the, the funny thing is you're watching that, right? And you're looking at the Reds roster. No offense. They're not good. They're not good. Their bullpen is not good. No. And they're not good defensively. At some point, even though the Cardinals were getting whiff after whiff after whiff with scoring opportunities, uh, I, I figured the, the Cardinals still, if you were if you were going by Vegas odds, had to be favored to win that game. And I do think the the difference really was defense. You know, like the Cardinals made plays at home when they had to. I mean, a lot of teams don't make those plays. That one play that Goldschmidt made leading Palante to Never the heard back to get really, really good. I mean, that, to me, that was the, the difference in the game. And obviously the Cardinal bullpen was excellent as well. I'm just glad they're done playing the Reds, though, Charlie, aren't you? Like, they're, you know, they're not done. Yeah, they're not they done. they got five games coming Sign up. Up. Five you know games I mean. in four days. <laughs> I'm off of that it's series. It's boring. There's a two-week stretch we're in the middle of, really almost two and a half weeks, where it's all... It's Reds, it's Cubs, it's Nats, Pirates, it's Pirates. Pirates. I mean, it's a full it's a full two weeks until they play, what, the Brewers in mid-September. And then they go uh, San Diego and L.A. coming up, yeah. too, on a long road trip. Then I think two with the Brewers. Yeah. So they have one road trip where they have uh, very good uh, opposition, but they're going to play a lot of the have-nots. How many games are they going to win, Cardinals? This year? How many games are they going to win? I, I would like to check what we said early in the season. What did we, we say? Our, did we did, didn't we? Is there Nate? Can we yeah. go back and try to find that at some point? We sure can. I would like to because I remember, I remember we were talking I about the Dakota rankings, kind of saying they weren't going to win many games. Yeah, and I, I said they would win a lot more than what Dakota. I think I said eighty four, didn't I, Nathaniel? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going against the grain a little bit. We should get that up because I think. I mean, they have a huge opportunity just to win a lot of ball games coming up here against some bad, bad and give them teams. credit. You know, the, the Quintana didn't go deep, but he pitched well enough after giving up two runs. But, I mean, the, the additions that they made to the starting rotation have been outstanding. I think they're like 10-1 and one in, in starts by Montgomery and Quintana. And now they're getting Jack Flaherty back. Um, probably the news yeah. on, on that tomorrow. My guess is because uh, Ali said, well, we're we're toying with the idea of a six-man rotation. I don't really think they were. I think you just don't want to tell Dak he's out. Um, <laughs> but I think after, even though Ali was kind of praising Dakota's outing, the the, the results weren't good. Um, what was he praising them? Well, he was, and, and there's an element of truth to it. Um, he got beat by guys hitting hitting through the shift. You know, which you don't see a lot, guys going the opposite way Fine, yeah. to beat the shift. Um, and then they went down. Like, I don't know if he was tipping pitches. It's not for me to say that kind of thing. But, you know, he's a sinker baller. And there was two or three what I thought were well-placed, good sinker balls that hitters that are kind of run-of-the-mill hitters went down and got as if they knew what was coming. Maybe that's what you're sitting on when it's Dakota Hudson. Um, I think he's a good pitcher. I don't think he ever snapped into into form. I think he's going to end up in the bullpen, but I'm not one to write off Dakota. You know, he's coming off surgery. Sometimes that first year back is an adjustment year. We've seen Dakota at his best. I, I think he still can be a good pitcher. I just don't think he's going to be in the rotation. When Jack Charlie, Jackson. Charlie, yes. Charlie, yes. should our boy Kiz get more playing time over Yachty? Yachty's batting under two hundo. Is that is that something that uh, should be talked more about? Well, I feel like we talk about that uh, a decent amount here, but Yachty's going to get every start for Wayno. Obviously, I'm fine with Kiz getting most of the other starts. You got to give Yachty probably at least two out of every five. Still in the postseason, there's just there's a comfort level I for me you. when Yachty or Molina I hear you is that. starting a game. And I Ali said you. that you know Ali said you know that he he told Yachty just be ready you know to go. And to be honest, right now, you don't want Yachty to keep going like this. You get, maybe give him a little rest and then give him a lot because you, you need that guy in the postseason. And Yachty does have that you know, element where he does step it up in big situations. He, he controls we the kids, play. You know? He, you know, no, no, but no. even offensively, 
You know, he could be 0 for 3, and in a key situation, somehow he you're right. You know, he punches one through the hole or comes up with a with a big play. We've seen that time and time again. Sir Nathaniel, Lars yeah. Newtbar. Wait, you can't come to me yet. I'm already getting the uh, predictions. <laughs> I already have them, pretty much. Let's go. Well, hang on. I got to get <clears throat> Jimmy's and then yours. Oh, you clipped them off. Yeah. Oh. Just give me one second. Cardinals on pace for 94 wins right now. But that's for the whole season, so they're trending Better than that, obviously, the last month or so. Yeah. They got some bad teams coming up here, Charlie Marlowe. Bad probably win, teams. And what probably did, win what, 97 games. Yeah, what, did, what did Pakota say? I, that's, I want that, too. I think it was 82. It, yeah. I mean, that was kind of crazy. Spartan 4-4. Whiff after whiff after whiff. The cat must be highlighting Paul DeYoung. How's he doing? Not good. Okay. And I wasn't. I was saying whiff meaning coming up with nothing yeah. with runners in scoring position. Not yeah. necessarily a strikeout. Though there were some of those, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pat Tony, I didn't watch the game because of some other commitments, but I watched the highlights this morning. Can somebody explain how the Reds didn't didn't score on the infield hit in the 12th with a guy on third? Fat Tony. Tony. Do you get what you're saying? When we read it first again, and third, were, no outs. Yeah, I mean, and the Cardinals, I mean, the Cardinals throughout the game, I mean, they had the Cardinals at second and third, one out, and they had... Guys in scoring position all night long. Like I said, I, I don't know what the final number was, but 0 for 16 at one point with runners in scoring position. This is a team that in the month of <laughs> August pretty much led every offensive category. Yeah. They're bored against in the Major Red, League man. Baseball. They're bored. Bam. 0 for 17, they finished. Holy cow, Jimmy, you're there. What time did you get in home last night? Tony wants to know. Two, two o'clock. A little after two. And you went to bed at 2 30? Yeah. Man, <laughs> and, I mean it's not it's not a big deal. And like I said uh, before the show started, I actually like doing the show. Like, yeah. it, it's not like I'm going to a dentist appointment. <laughs> like I You're once I'm ditches. here, I like doing the show. I like talking to you boys. It's getting up. That's not it. Ooh, but, Jimmy. I and even, it's dark I even, now. The alarm didn't even have to go off. Jimmy, that's, it's dark now. Yeah, driving. Okay. That gets me. Why? Whoa. Well, because. In July, you I'm got tra- lights on that truck. I yeah, well, I mean, it's tough to see way out there, and there's deer everywhere, and it's 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 kind of dangerous. You said it's beautiful out there. It's gorgeous, but I can't see the the beauty because it's so dark. But when before in July and June, like I'm driving to work and the sun's coming up, it's like wake up, Cam, wake up. Now it's like oh no, Cam, <laughs> you better you better put your brights on because you can't see anything. You know what? That's what it says to me. I the de- I depend on the brilliance of the dais. Yes, but once to, I get here, man, it's great. Me. It's great. It is a little creepy when I get here because I always think somebody's in here. I do. God, I love you. I always think somebody's in here. You think someone's in here and you ha- and you don't like driving in the dark. Well, no, I don't like driving in the dark or in the rain or in the snow. I don't like doing it. I like to sit in my house and chill and watch a movie when it's raining I'm outside. I'm a 16-year-old girl driving my new car here. Hey, that's true, too. That's a dangerous thing. It is a danger because they're always on their phone. I see everything. They're on their phone all the damn time. Man. Anyway, I feel like somebody's in here. I hear things, and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I look around, and it's the, the dump truck out there or something. But it's a little creepy in here, especially when it's dark. If you hear a noise in your house at 3 in the morning, <sighs> what? I'm like, where's Boo? You get a weapon? No, not yet. Wait. You get yeah. a baseball bat? I go, where's Boo? Where's Boo? Boo's your dog. No, it's Boo's my little kitty cat no. who roams the house, freelanced. The dogs aren't going to mess with her. That's her little Boo time. And she gets into things, and she'll drop things, and she'll knock things over to piss me off. So I always think it's her. But if that little kitty's on my bed, and the doggies are in their crate, or they're on the bed too, and I hear something, then I get up like, oh, okay. Like, let does, me your, just... does your blood start flowing? Well, like, it did this other... could be it? I told you the story the other day. My wife's, like, she doesn't freak out. She's not hypochondriac by any stretch of the imagination. Well, unless I didn't, you know, answer my phone, and I was, like, partying all night. That's a different story. But... She freaked out one morning, about a month ago. I told Charlotte, and she goes, somebody's here. And I'm like, what? What woke me up right in the middle of the night? Somebody's here. Not, hey, did you hear this? Somebody's here. And I'm like, oh, snap. Here it is. Here it is. Like, I heard it. Get over there. Like, I'm getting this. Like, get in there. And I kind of look out. So what, did you grab a spatula? Uh-huh. No, I got. And I'm not. Fr- I'm, not I'm not crazy. I'm, not, I'm like, let me see. what. The- I open the door, and I peek out, and I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm like, where's Boo? I go, Kate, where's Boo? She's on the bed. She's on the bed. You sh- 
No, she's not. She's licking the plate, Kate, in the kitchen, and it's making a noise. Boo's not on a bed. It's just her little housey. Wait, let me get a picture. So you're peeping out? Oh, I'm peeping out. I open the doors and I You don't come out like I'm Cam Jansen. No. You're in my house. No, because they could, well, no, because they could shoot me first. So I'm kind of like, what? I want to see what's up. I need to gauge the situation. Damn right. I'm not going out there full blazing. No, no. That's how, that's how you get messed up. I'm going to creep out. I'm going to take a peek. I'm not going to overreact. I come, and it was out, I come out guns a blazing because that this <laughs> is why I figure it. Like she if, got me though, like dude. You're, if you're a burglar and you're like six three with tats, I'm you know you've been in federal penitentiary, and here comes an old guy with a little league bat. You're terrified. No, <laughs> you ain't doing nothing, man. That's why you kind of creep out, see what's going on. But like if they get in the house, like we don't leave our doors unlocked. The things are going off, you know. But she freaked me out. I think last night's win was a statement to the bullpen, Geo. Statement to the bullpen, boys. <laughs> what does that mean, Geo? It means the bullpen had to pitch forever <laughs> and was flawless except at the very end. I don't even know. Like, if you're a reliever and the and the ghost runner scores, like, I don't even care. You know, like, that's not on you. doesn't count. It doesn't. Towards their ERA. But oh, yeah. That's why, when it, hey, did the bullpen give up any runs? Not, not really. They did, but not an earned run. Gino's like, I grew up in the city. If I heard a noise, I just turned over and fell back asleep. I knew we didn't have anything worth stealing. <laughs> I get you on that. New Bar hit an absolute nuke last night. No doubt uh, for sure. He's turning around. He's got a lot of energy, Jimmy. He's got a lot of energy. Well, he's an energy guy. He's an energy guy. He's always been, even when he's hitting 220, um, he was always embraced by his teammates. As, as if he was a veteran anyway. Everybody loves that guy. And he can do a lot of things for you. You know, he walked, stole a base last night. Yeah. They didn't bring him in. Um, I also like the way he plays defense. Like, every once in a while, he'll sprawl for a ball and miss it. But I like the aggression. He does everything with aggression, and I, I like that. Timmy Van Gelder. Yachty needs a mail-it-in Marlowe workload. Look for any reason to take an extra day off. Happy La Labor Day weekend, boys. What does that mean? Here's the difference, though. <laughs> when Yachty <laughs> left... For Mailing Puerto Rico, he didn't get paid. Dad. See, I wouldn't do that. Because I'm not getting paid. You wouldn't leave if you're getting paid? Weren't getting paid? If you're on the restricted list in baseball, yeah. you don't get paid. That was part of the whole Toronto thing. Yeah. And also, if you're on the restricted list for anything, which is usually something more personal, yeah. you don't get paid. So I would not do that. I know. Because I want my money. <laughs> so that's an so incorrect So take that like it, Timmy Van Gelden. Why are they going after you? Why are they going after you, Charlie? What's going on here? Well, mail it in Marlowe is a very, very uh, old <laughs> term from Martin Marlo. and I's show. <laughs> it started when I said, I think, I basically said that once Thanksgiving hits, a lot of people kind of just cruise until the new year. And a lot of people disagreed with me. And then, oh, there's police officers and firefighters. They can never take it out. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah, that. I yeah. think there's a lot of jobs. I think there's some sales jobs. If you're, if you're kind of good for that final quarter... Maybe you want to just start off the next year right. I think there's a lot of people that when Thanksgiving hits, they kind of are in not here. cruise control until after the new year. What's, What's a mail-it-in job? Mail you can job. never take a day off. <laughs> a mail-it-in job? Outside of sideline. This job? Not here, Charlie Marlowe. Not on 5 well, all. Fan. It's all relative. Now, it'll take See? Sunday off, baby. What's up? <laughs> Here's one. And I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to out anybody. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that friends of mine are wrong on this. Mm -hmm. I'm putting that... Uh, that little addendum on there. I know that they're probably wrong. Yes. But I have some friends who sell medical equipment, medical sales. Oh, they're making money. And they say, once you have your client list, Make pretty money. much you go into the doctor's offices a few times a week and bring them lunch. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. What, to get your client list? or No, just to deal with the doctors. Trust me, my neighbor, same thing. He made a very successful dude. Very younger than I am. And he says it's a it's kind of a pain in the ass to deal with a lot of things, and he wants to sell real estate instead. Like he, really, yeah. Because my buddies are like, yeah, I just I bring lunch to the you know to the yeah. big clients like here 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 here, and then they sign up for the equipment or whatever they're selling, and then you bring them just bring them a nice lunch. Yeah, you cater it for the office. But the doctors also kind of own you. Yeah, they own you. All, all my buddies that do that who do well. Yeah. They also, the second that doctor wants Cardinal tickets, you, Blues tickets, yeah, dude. you basically have to do well, whatever they, they say. They need a meeting. You need to come into the hospital. You need to check this out. We need to see this. We need to do that. Like, they own you. Come in here. We need you in here. Like, you're on the call. Man. See, that's different, though. You're saying, like, yeah, this medical device isn't uh, 
snapping into the proper position. Charlie's saying, get me Cardinal tickets. That's I think it's everything. I think it's a little bit of everything. But I don't want anyone to own me. Hell no. Hell no. Nah. That's why I like working here. That's exactly. why I like doing my own thing. I don't want somebody tapping me on the shoulder like, sir, we need to have that you know what meeting again. Like, oh God, two hours, Zoom call. <laughs> Let me know how bad I am as a person. Do you guys want to hear your predictions? Yeah, we I do. do. Can we guess right. what they were? Yeah. Sure. Seth, you go first. I think Wait. I said 90. All right. Jimmy? But I probably didn't. I think I said 92. <laughs> All I, right. I probably said I probably said maybe 88. Wow. Wow. Or did I say 91? No, I you know. said 88. I think... I well, said eighty four. Was anyone close? Let's let's hear. This what? is this was Charlie. The Cardinals, you can almost always bank on a I'm gonna predict a nice crisp eighty eight win. Oh Charlie. Son of a win. Charlie is right. They always do at least that. Yeah. Here was Jimmy. Uh I think I'm gonna go ninety two <laughs> wins. <laughs> that was right. And here's why I think they're better than the Brewers. Um you I agree like, the Brewers have better pitching, starting and bullpen. I think when injuries factor in and they always do <laughs> I think the the Brewers are more vulnerable because if one of those starters goes down, they're they're going to be in a world of trouble because I don't think the offense is good enough to cover up for any any slip up with that starting rotation. How about that? Well and said. Freddie Peralta did go down for a little bit. Well said. I, I cut so Charlie's off. Do you want to hear the rest of Charlie's explanation? Yes. Okay. Did you talk about his wins? YouTube? <laughs> I just I think the Brewers are better than the Cardinals because of their rotation. And their top end bullpen pieces, and I think wow. the Brewers will finagle enough offense through Hunter Renfro and Andrew McCutcheon, and if Christian Yelich can even be just any better than he was last year, so I, I'd say the Brewers win like ninety ish. I have the Cardinals as an eighty eight win team that makes the wild card. Mm. Well All said. Right. What Sethy boy Here's say? Seth. Well, there's now there's an extra playoff spot, right? There used to be five, now there's six. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think boy. we'll sneak in as a six seed. Oh. I like that. And detail. we win the whole damn thing. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh, 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 oh. How many wins did Seth We're going to win. Well, we never really got a win total. We just got the sixth Numbers, seed. Numbers right. are a tough concept for Seth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I'll stick to us winning the World Series then. If I'm not going to pick a number, Hell then yeah. I got to go all in. Well, you betting on that mug? I'm, I mean, because you could say all the things you want. They're like, if you, if no, you don't I, make it, I, I think that's a rights. valid thing. I actually don't. I don't think that's. A, I think a lot of people that didn't believe might say that Seth is right. I'm just upset with myself that I didn't crush him for never giving a number. <laughs> At the well, actually, very core of it is that Seth is a fair guy. <laughs> actually, he is. There was an early. I was, you know, it's kind of tricky to go through the audio. I'll be honest with you, but. Uh, so Seth goes into breaking down the, the, the day. It was the opening day. So he went into what he thought the Cardinals were going to do against the Pirates that day, which then led into Cam asking whether or not Christian Yelich's mom was hot. Well, is she or no? <laughs> and that broke into a whole nother discussion. So, <laughs> And then Cam said the Cards would win 9 nothing, and they did. What, what, oh, yeah, that's true. Opening day. Great memory. What you number did Cam get? Here is Cam. All right, I got to go somewhat negative here. I'm going to say... <laughs> I'm gonna say their pitching pitching is gonna be an issue for a while, and they're gonna they're gonna be in a hole for a little bit. They're gonna beat the, the Pirates, but they're gonna get into a little bit of hole, and they're gonna win 81 games. Oh, one. God, I Mr. sound Picoto stupid. Uh, well, whatever. Yeah, a, man, remind me never to talk about baseball season. again. I sound dumb. <laughs> well, no, I, no, no, no. I, I sound dumb. Now. <laughs> no, Seriously. Anytime you talk, there's an element of risk. It's what, what am I? 81. They already won 81 games. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a long season. Oh, what about you? What about you, so Nate? Stupid. I said, uh, <laughs> how many wins? A month ago. Fair. I mean, that's <laughs> the compelling question. Ninety-one. Ninety-one. There we okay. go. Now, are you like the rest of us, Nate? <laughs> yeah. Who I think you're a very polished broadcaster. <laughs> but I think Charlie is, and Charlie says he hates listening to himself. He oh, says he doesn't like even. listening to. Don't do even. you like listen to yourself and go pretty good, or do you cringe? No, I cringe. I, I don't cringe. care about radio. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree. Nate got pissed at Hawkman the other day. You know, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, last night. Last he did night, tweet he, about East tripping. Yeah. Last night, he he kind of took a picture of Rick Ankiel and, and referred to him as Max Headroom because of a bad Zoom. And I am looking at, and I like Hoxie, 
Uh, I know he doesn't like that nickname, but that's what he is, Hoxie. He's a good man. But uh, I've seen his videos. I don't, if I were making videos, like I wouldn't make fun of Rick and Kill Zoom. But what did Hoxie do to... So what are you saying? <laughs> all of us, all of us can be targets yes. for some of the work we do. That's basically... We are all, a target. It's, again, it's about common ground. We all sometimes don't look as good as we want on camera. Oh, God. Sounds like you saw something specific, though. What, with Hoxie's... I, I look at some of Hoxie's video, I'm just saying... It's not like their network quality, you know. Not like, terms of happy birthday shots and celebrities that surely aren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I. So what did? What were you mad about? About Hoxie? What did Ted you, and Hockman, you Ted and Hockman, Daily Dose of Sports. That. <laughs> what was that? Hey, exactly. I don't know. I think he thinks he's Robin Williams. All right, terms of happy birthday shots and celebrities that surely aren't watching. Continue to <laughs> scroll on TikTok, you loser. <laughs> <laughs> You're mad at Hoxie because he sounded like Robin Williams? No, I didn't like, I didn't care for the uh, article about Molina. I, I just think there, there's so many other stories you could focus on this team. Oh, God. And this is me, all right, coming at it from an angle of positivity. Yes! <laughs> and yes. I think that to come at it, God. settling on this idea that we need to tear... Like, he's already gone after Arenado. He's already gone after Goldschmidt. Now he's taking a swing at Molina for the basketball really? thing. And, and he was on an 0 for 17 stretch, which, I mean, anyone who's been around baseball understands that, like, an 0 for 17 stretch, I get you can tie some things together. Everyone's probably going to go through an 0 for 17. I, like, 0 for 17 to me is a, is such a minute number. If he was 0 for 70, then yeah, or 0, 2 for 50, something like that. But 0, 0 for, for a million. 0 for 17? That's a, that's a two games. Three games. That's more than two games, unless you get that many at bat. I, look, Yachty is, he, first of all, I, it, how old, he's, he's, he's how, I mean, he's, he's not at the peak of his career. He's, he's my there. age. He's there 27. because <laughs> Bodhi. because no one handles pitchers better than yet. Forget blocking right. balls, which he's still good at. He's not as good as he used to be, okay, but he's still good. But no one handles pitchers. And you talk about pitch framing, which is subtly a big part of handling pitchers. No one does that better. The quiet hands, sometimes it's cliche, but you can see the difference. Any catcher in baseball compared to Yachty. In, in terms of framing a pitch, where your body is when you catch the ball so it looks more like a strike to the umpire. All these things are why you want Yachty behind the plate. Now, nothing against kids. I'm just saying Yachty's there, and he's going to probably be the first choice in the postseason for those reasons. Yeah. There it is. Hey, uh, do you boys have a Goldilocks hair update from New York? Iris Sean wants to know. I don't think he's been playing. Is he he's still out, isn't he? Last I heard he was in a boot. I don't know. Guys, sales is sales. Only difference is what you're slinging. Your buddy wanting to sell real estate better think twice. That market is saturated with peeps. Everyone thinks they can do it, but most suck. Happy Thursday, Sharon and Glencoe. He's already a step ahead of the game, girl. Like, he's not selling like real estate, right? He's selling like 15,000 acres in the middle of Missouri because a farmer died. And that's what he's doing. Or in her selling beautiful real estate, like farmland and stuff. He just takes it side by side down there and shows, shows it off. Like, it's actually a pretty cool gig. Wouldn't mind, you know... Kate could sling that too. I know she would. Um, but yeah, so I get you saying sales is sales, like selling anything's tough, man. Girl, I should say. Sorry about that. But uh woman. Yeah, woman. Dang it, woman. David Pipeler, who's this cat? Blake Gilkillen summoned for random drug tests after an 81 yard punt, and he's got a mullet of all mullets. 81 yard punt. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Big bounce. And they, or what? they got him in a drug test <laughs> right afterwards. Did you guys talk about the guy that was uh, uh, chirping Pujols about steroids? Did oh, you yeah. guys talk about that? Oh, we did. Yeah, dude. Isn't that kind of unbelievable? He's a jackass from Barstool, 23-year-old. picture? Is it, you, you Jimmy, you don't even have to. I don't have to see the picture. I already know what he looks like. What do you think? Jacked. Athletic. No, he's a skinny little nerd, you know, writing blogs. <laughs> he never played sports in his life. You know, one of those guys. He's so good, probably a good looks, guy. He looks ticked off too in his picture. Oh, yeah, because people he's posted mad at it. the world. It was just a, it was a gutless, yeah. it was a gutless article because you spent the entire article insinuating that Albert Pujols was on performance enhancing drugs, and then 
way down in a paragraph, you said, no, I'm not saying that he's on PEDs. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what you're doing for the entire article. And even worse, instead of instead of standing up and saying, this is my belief, he made it seem like, it's not my fault for believing this and because of past abusers. You know, God. like... Oh my God. The other thing is, if you look up the numbers, we did this yesterday. He's homering basically once every 17 plate appearances. The exact amount he was last year. Yeah. He's walking more. <clears throat> he, he's actually, he's getting more hits that aren't homers this year. That's the that's the big difference. He's on pace to get, I think it's uh, 19 home runs this year. Yeah. Right now. He had and, 17 last year. And what did, uh, what did Chris Welsh say? Because he told me he was on... He, uh, Tim show yeah, yeah. because they thought he said Pujols was on steroids. And yeah. He said, no, I said the ball was juiced because Albert he flicked that outside pitch. But no no offense, Albert's still a big, strong guy. He's yeah. not as strong as Alonzo. Yeah, no, <laughs> Jimmy, nobody is yeah. except for, of course, Stubby Clapp. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, and that did that get traction? Like, did, did anyone, did, did people believe that he was saying that Albert – was no, it, it blew up pretty good. I think it did, didn't it? Did we play that clip? Yeah, we did. You, did. did you hear the clip, Jimmy? No. Do you still have it? I do. Hang on. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I thought he blamed it on the wall. I thought he said the wall was too short. Oh, maybe he just said we need to check that. We need to look into that. Was kind of the gist. But here, but hang like on. that's he was backtracking as well. Yeah. Dun 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 I got that pretty quick for you to go back. Yeah, yeah, what was that? April seventh. Yeah, that's right. No, that was. A, You're good at what you do. That was unbelievable. I was. I'm, I was meaning tomorrow. Jimmy, he's going to Wisconsin <laughs> again with the wealthy folk. Did you know that? For the weekend. Yeah, he's going to the with the secret wealthy crowd. Yep, with the two boats. They chirp <gasps> a little bit. He's going back up there. You know, so helicopter this time or what? Uh, yeah. Yep, he's taking the helicopter. PJ, what are those boats again? That uh, the Streblo. Streblo. And you start you you. <laughs> Then you turn I chirped around a little bit. Him. I chirped a little but bit. Then you kind of I come around. But I backtracked just like this guy. I backtracked a little bit. I was back. Well, was the nicest blah. guy. He was like, "Yeah, I was on that show. They here they, you go. They thought I was mentioning <laughs> steroids." Against Ross Detweiler, and for the 694th time in his career, he hits the seats. That looked like a half swing. I mean, didn't it? To it you? did. O2 count, half swing to right field, home run the other way. Yeah, I'd take a hard look at that. Yeah. Ooh! I'd take a hard, hard look, look at, at that. that. Well, they took a hard look at Detweiler, who's from here, and they sent him on his way. <laughs> what they did. <laughs> he was uh, backtracking, though. He was. He was. The other one, is he on PEDs? Yeah. <laughs> when you say that, he was, in my opinion, he's insinuating one of two things. The PED angle or the or juice ball, ball yeah, angle. Ball, yeah. Nothing about the wall. Which, by the way, we looked this up. That homer was 369 feet. Yeah. It wasn't right down the line. No. And it would have been a home run at 23 out of 30 ballparks. And it wasn't a half swing. And we, like, we looked at it. It was it was a full swing. The only reason it looked weird, we also looked this up, it was the only opposite field home run Albert has hit all year. He's essentially a dead pole hitter at yeah. this point. That's why it looked odd. It's like, All right, so he also, Albert, hit a neck-high fastball yeah. out the other day. That was awesome. Neck high. I think he, he hit turned on that guy. Could be. I don't know. If, I don't remember if he pulled it or not. But we're seeing Albert. The the thing about Albert now is, and I forget which teammate even said it might have been Wayno saying, "Look, he's hitting balls out that aren't strikes too." I mean, give the guy credit where it's due. I don't. Do you really think at this point in his career? Why would you risk that? It, it doesn't make sense. So let's take a hard look at that. The wall. The wall's the same. It's been there for That's a long time. Mean. I know. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Take a look. You've been here forever. Go. You, you haven't looked at the wall yet? You didn't know when Scooter Jeanette hit four bombs <laughs> there on. that maybe the wall was uh, not, you know, not not the most fair park in baseball? I'll tell you something. Uh, Billy Ripken did a whole breakdown on MLB Tonight with Jim Tomey, and they, they analyzed Pujol's swing of him getting through the zone and his bat staying on the same plane the entire way, and that was how they were showing him hit that ball in Chicago that was at his letters and they draw a parallel from like the dugout railing yeah. and where his bat was going and where it starts and where it finishes. And he's barreling. I mean, he's flushing these baseballs. So, and, and a lot of it has to do with because he's got this short stroke where with two strikes, he's not trying to strike out. So he's just trying to put the ball in play. 
And Pools <clears throat> is still, like you said, immensely strong. And so when he barrels one up, it's going to go a long way. Even when Pools was hitting the amount of home runs he was in the 10 years or 11 years here, he wasn't like La Russa always used to get pissed at people when they would say, well, he's a home run hitter. No, he's a line drive hitter, and they just keep finding the seats because he's so damn strong. And uh, what some I don't think he gets sure. enough credit for, because I hear it when I'm sitting next to the dugout. He knows what these guys are going to throw. He, I mean, he's a really smart guy. That's why every player, like you could see in the dugout, he's got that iPad, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's not for him, it's for other guys. And I hear him say, He's going to throw you this. Or I, I hear that. And uh, Skip Schumacher yesterday on the pregame show said that Albert is there with Goldie and Arenado at the hitters' meetings. And they all kind of talk about what to expect or whatever. And Skip said, I look around the room to make sure the young guys understand that Albert Pujols is offering information to you, one of the greatest hitters of all time. And I look around just to make sure – that they understand how special that yeah, is and that they in. should listen up. This guy outside, look, I, I get, you know, that he had some down years. I, I think he was dealing with a lot of stuff. He's healthy now, and he knows what to expect at the plate. It's almost like he's a step ahead on, on top of the fact that he's really strong. Yeah. What's up, Charlie? Stat cast. Let's go. Max exit velocity this year is 111.7. That's actually down a mile per hour from last year. His average exit velocity is only up 0.6 of a mile per hour from last year. So it's essentially the same. The biggest difference is launch angle. It's up three degrees. So he's not necessarily hitting the ball any harder, any different. This year he's walking much more. But that three-degree launch angle, that's probably going to be the difference of three to five home runs. Yeah. By the way, great interview with uh, Schumacher pregame. I have a cut pulled Let's up. Let's do it. Wanna, Let's hear go. Let's go. Jimmy and Dang yeah, right. I can't fathom being Let's in the skip about pool holes. In the box right now facing guys that are throwing 95 to 100 miles an hour and catching up to it. It's amazing what he's doing. Surprised to know because we've been around him for so long and he does amazing things all the time. But this is truly unbelievable. The second half, especially watching him day in and day out, and you know, I kind of pinched myself that I get to watch it, uh, you know, from a good seat. You know, he's doing the, he's running the hitters meetings along with Goldie and Nato, and um, you know, I'm looking around and making sure these young guys really know what they're getting because you're getting a guy, you know, in my opinion, the best right-hander ever. I know it's Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, but the, for me, it's the best right-handed hitter ever. Speaking in hitters' meetings, and you get to listen to it. Uh, it's pretty special. Pretty great. Great interview. I like that Skippy Schumacher too, man. Boy, he's a good. Dude. He's a cool cat. He wore fifty-five. We did some things together when I was playing here. When he was Is that right? Him. Yep. And uh, who was the fifty-five? Uh, all right, Laurinaitis mm-hmm. from the Rams. <clears throat> we did like a, I don't know, some commercial or something. Geo Champs and Hot Take Central. I don't think you guys should self-deprecate about being on the radio. You guys are the best morning show in St. Louis, bar none. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. I guess the real question is, and I think Charlie posed the question yesterday, does Yachty still care this season? Is his mind 100% on baseball? I think those are fair questions to ask. Gio, did I hear a little, did they hear something back there? Sorry. He does that sometimes, you know. No, not on purpose. I just like. <laughs> Especially when Charlie says something political about something and you'll hear like. I'm like, oh, what, you back there? I what, see. me? Uh, Sharon Hockman will write an article questioning a Hall of Famer's compete level, then write another one why the same dude won't talk to him post-game in a locker room. Hack. Sharon. Did that happen? I don't know. Morning, boys. Sanderson, what's up? Pretty sure the Barstool needs a Cubs fan. Oh, the Barstool is a Cubs fan. I think he's a Mets fan. Yeah. He's a bitter Mets fan. Mets fans are traditionally hate the Cardinals. No big mystery here. He's basically accusing pool holes for juicing while then saying he's not saying he's juicing. He's Tommy, he's Timmy Lupa, Lupus without the game saving play. Timmy Lupus. <clears throat> Timmy, Timmy Lupus? Lupus. Who the hell is that? What is that? Timmy Lupus? That's a bad name. It's kind of a Timmy Lupus. No no idea. Idea. I'm no just idea. saying. I, yeah, His yeah. article, though, I, under- I understand Bears. that if you're looking at... Oh, 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 yeah, you're, yeah. Who is it? Uh, it's character from the Bad News Thank Bears. You, Thank Bad you, News Bears. I understand if you're looking at the Good entire move. steroids era. I think most people say, who knows, man? A lot of these dudes were on it. If you look at everybody the last 30 years, yes. I can understand why nobody would surprise me. 
in terms of the steroids era if somebody was on juice. But you're specifically calling out the 42-year-old dude who's got 15 homers. He yeah. had 17 last year. I mean, it, it's really not... It's not that crazy that Albert Pujols could hit 21 home runs this season after he hit 17 last year, and he's getting to play in many more games this year. Welsh backtrack Iggy style on TMA like an old argument with the cat back in the day, the, de- the degenerate wombat. <clears throat> so last night on the broadcast, um, Jimmy and Danny were having this discussion about bunting, and Dan basically said he, he would not bunt based on the fact that guys can't bunt anymore. And I know that that's a whole debate. Some people hate the bunt. I think there's a place for the bunt and that players should be prepared to bunt. Like, especially when you're starting extra innings with a runner at second. Like, wouldn't you say that the move is if you have a dependable bunter, the first thing you want to do is get that guy to third so that a sack fly or a ball the opposite way can bring him home. So I'm for the bunt. And I think it ties in to the whole thing with them wanting to ban the shift because, to me, baseball cyclical. Like, guys used to bunt. They can't bunt anymore. It, guys used to hit the other way and be able to use the whole field, and that gave way to launch angle because the school of thought, it started as there's three outfielder, out, there's three defensive players in the biggest part of the ballpark. That's where you want to hit the ball. I get all that. But, like, with the shift – players are taught again to use the whole field, then you beat the shift more often, and then you don't use the the shift as much because it's not as effective, and you don't have to ban it. To me, the same thing with bunting. There are times, especially as Danny pointed out, in the postseason, where you'd like to have a bunt laid down, right? Yeah. Because the games are tight or whatever. Guys have to know how to bunt, which means through the minor leagues, they have to be get back oh, to using the whole yeah. field and being able to bunt once in a while. Not not every, not every, the 30 home run prospect is going to learn to bunt, but there's a lot of other guys that can enhance their value by learning to bunt. I get you. Are, is everyone dead set against the bunt? Nate's making a face. <clears throat> the, the only issue I have with it is I, I believe there are some analytics that suggest on the road that first run isn't going to do it for you. So if you're the away team and you're hitting in the top half of the inning, that, that. that runner on second, you either – I mean, it's pretty rare to go – what did they go, 13 last night? Well, what if you're the home team? The home team – I mean, my God, the Reds – like, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that's just embarrassing. They had many cracks uh, in the bottom half of the inning with a runner on second base and nobody out to score that run, and they couldn't do it. And to me – Mostly that's because the batter before couldn't get the guy. But even a couple times, they got the guy to third. Yeah, I mean, they had, they had two or two, yeah. <laughs> three times with it. But, but generally speaking. <laughs> so bad. And, I, and I, I've read the analytics. I understand the uh, argument. That but you don't want to play for one if you're, if you're the visiting team. But if you're the home team, you need to run. I'm just saying have a guy who can bunt. Like if you had a guy, wouldn't that be your move? You're managing. Yeah. And you start with a guy. Then you bunt, and you get him at third, and then you knock him in without needing a hit. I still like from time to time when you see a safety squeeze or, or somebody kind of you know, laying one down when you're not anticipating it. Last night, they, they tried it with Edmund at one point, and he didn't even look comfortable. And I thought of all players who you would yeah. think would be comfortable getting a bunt down, Tommy would be the guy. But he didn't he didn't look real comfortable, and they're just not working on it. That's, that's my point, is that baseball cyclical – and if you if you want this in your repertoire, you got to work on it through the minor league system. The other thing about that ghost runner, like we saw it last night. Like if you're the Reds, you have Romine starting at second base or Colin Moran. You know, like if you start with a fast guy at second base, based on how you know the innings unfold, you're you're a, a percentage wise, I would imagine, much higher percentage of getting that run to score. Than Austin Romine. I'm an anti buntite, and what uh, Nate said is correct. Your run expectancy uh-huh. actually goes down. So the analytics behind it, basically, if you have a runner on second, no outs, the expected runs, it's 1.1. If you have a runner on third with one out, the expected runs is 0.95. It actually goes down. Your, your probability of scoring a run goes down in that situation, which is why. 
part of the whole Moneyball era is that the most valuable thing in baseball is your 27 outs and don't give them up. I, I get that. But I think, it, like anything else, it's situational. I, the, those numbers are good. But if I'm, if I'm managing at home and I have a chance to win the game, I want a guy to bunt the runner over if I'm starting the inning with a guy at second base. I, I don't, and to me, that the numbers in that situation, I'm going to not pay attention. By the way, uh, the money ball thing had nothing to do with great pitching. It was Scott Hatterberg, who, as you know, was a league MVP three times. But it did have to do with drafting college pitchers, <laughs> No, that's which true. they did. But they didn't really talk much about pitching in that movie. Well, the book did. The book did. I didn't read the book. I saw the movie. Five hours of listening to Edmonds. My ears are still bleeding. Leave him alone. Four. I didn't say it. Three one four seven. I I'll, love Edmonds. I'll fight you. He makes me laugh, man. His ears are bleeding, though, Jimmy. What do you do? Put some tissue in that mug. Baseball's uh, toughen baseball. up. Toughen, toughen up. up. How can you not like Jimmy Ball game? You have to hate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares if he says some silly things from time to time? Yeah, I I've never, never heard anything silly. I love it. Well, occasionally. How dare you? Occasionally there are a few things. I want things. you to issue an <laughs> apology right now. No, because even Danny Mac gives him trouble for it on the air. So <laughs> I think it's fair ball. I think it's fair game. But it is fair game. He's great. So, I'd take Jimmy ball game I love. over Brad? In my Jimmy opinion, over Brad? In my opinion. They're both good. Who how, are you taking? How dare Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm you taking, taking Jimmy. Who are you taking, Charlie? I have to pick one? You Yes. <laughs> I think... No, pick three I of them. I think Brad and Danny Mac's rapport is really good. They're, they're almost like a comedy duo. They kind of know when to, to jump in there. Yeah. I just... I know some of the things Jimmy ball game says... They're kind of borderline, but the other day when Helsley and Arenado, they're both having children, and on the post game so uh, show, Jimmy Ballgame says, "Yeah, there's a lot of action nine months ago. How can you not laugh at that?" I I sit there. That's entertaining to me. Okay, I'm entertained. Why don't you ask me that question? Who would I? Go Who with? would you go with, Jimmy the Cat Hayes, you Brad know, Thompson, or Jimmy Ballgame? That's go. A, that's a great question, Cam. And let me answer it in this way. You talk about a cheesesteak at the post or a cheeseburger at the village bar. Don't, do, don't play choose, it. Don't play No, no. You got to pick one. I know. You got to no. pick one. You have How to. am I going to choose between that? You, you have Depends to pick one. Depends the kind of mood I'm in. You have to pick Both one. Both great options. Who are you picking? I'm going to pick Brad Thompson because I feel, I feel like I just – he talks enough – I like the rapport with Danny Mac, and I learn a lot from him. Now, I do learn a lot from Jimmy Ballgame, but I learn a lot more, I think, consistently from Brad Thompson, and I need that. I'm not a baseball savant. I know you guys think I am, but I'm not, okay? I'm not. You're pretty good, though. I'm pretty good. No, I'm terrible. I don't know a damn thing. And so, like, Brad, like, teaches me stuff. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Jimmy does, too, but Jimmy kind of corky too much, and I know Brad gets corky, too, but he, he talks more, and he explains more things more consistently. I, like I literally was not into any sports at all. I wouldn't. I was into myself, and that's it, selfishly. You did like, I know you like women's softball. I liked women's that's softball. True. I did do that. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. What about you? What about is, you, Sucky Is boy? Rick Ankiel eligible? Has oh. he called enough games? No, he hasn't. No, he he's hasn't not. called. I, I asked a simple question. All. He can't answer it. It's a simple <laughs> I did question. answer it. I did answer it. It's Brad Thompson. Yeah. You think so, too? Absolutely. I, think so. I, do, I agree. Because Jimmy doesn't make me laugh like he makes Charlie laugh, unfortunately. And I just learned for more from Brad. That's all. That's my opinion. You guys want to hear a couple of Jim Edmonds quotes from last night? Yes, I do. Cur courtesy no. of Jim Edmondisms yeah. yes. on Twitter. Oh, I'm looking that mug up. I don't want to bear Just yeah, curious. Let's go. Just curious. How can you keep your hair that wet in the 13th inning? That he was, was talking about India. That was what they call a hookie. I don't know what that means, but I've heard it a lot. A hookie? Look out, cat, wherever you are. Don't get your whiskers all dot, dot, dot ruffled up. Yeah, so that was dot 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 mean. Oh, just like pause, he, he just pause. yeah, like. So I think he hilarious. Meant, I heard that, and I thought he meant cookie, right? That's a cookie, not a. That make me laugh. Sometimes I wonder if he's uh, eating some cookies, if you know. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 like Oreos. So let me get this straight. You're accusing <laughs> him of no. using substances. And this is I'm what just wondering. And this wow. is what you prefer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cookies. Oh, let me compliment one thing. I have heard uh, when the game's been on, like, national TV, and uh, Danny Mac goes over and does a couple innings on radio, that's been really enjoyable. 
him and Rooney and uh, Ricky Horton together. I think. Oh yeah. You can just well. I mean, Danny. You know, his he came up in radio on uh, eleven twenty. Danny, I honestly, I'll say this: he's good, the man. he's the best play by play guy in baseball. He's good, and and I know a lot of people that are doing play by play that agree with that. I mean, he. You think about how many, like, have you ever seen a big moment? Have you ever not seen him frame it properly? No, he's. I he's never great have. He's legit. He is totally legit. He's um, my boy, and all legit. But I, Guys, how the hell did the Reds have 14 hits, seven walks, and only score two runs in 13 innings? Oh, wait, that's right. It's the Reds. What a clown show lineup they have, Joe Boo. Jackie says, I love Edmonds. 217, you can learn a lot by listening to Jimmy Ballgame. That is very true. I just feel like Brad teaches me more. At, more. See, <laughs> and as you read know. the text line, you begin to see my analogy is dead on. You didn't give an answer. Is it a post cheesesteak or is it a village bar cheeseburger? You can't go wrong with either one. Here's the difference. Yes. First of all, I would like I think, the virtue signal here. Yeah, yeah, me too. They're both they're both great in their own ways. And Brad is very funny and he's very self-deprecating. You have the journeyman baseball player, you have the superstar baseball player. You have the guy in Jimmy Ball game, I would think that doesn't really have to do that because he made what? How much money did he make? A lot, million? a lot of money. Whatever it was, yeah. it was a lot. And, and Brad, young guy, I believe he's my age, and also will probably be doing this for the next 20, 25 years. He's, he's really, really good at it. Jim Edmonds, if I was Jim Edmonds, I would also come in with a more laissez-faire attitude towards a job that is fun for me. Yeah. BT is way better than Jimmy Ballgame, Colby Rasmus' dad. And he produced a baseball player. Jack, Brad is a little too overexcited. Jackie boy, I get that. I get a little bit of that. I get that way too. Edmonds consistently talks over Danny. Does he, Jimmy? You, you notice that? Talks over him? There's a little bit. Rip on bit. your coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit. That was the dirt, Jim. <laughs> Look, I, the people that love Jimmy Edmonds, I understand why. I, I do too. And you take, like, from a pure execution yeah, standpoint, yeah, he doesn't. It, it doesn't apply to him because he's Jimmy Ball Game, and you love Ball Game because he's Jimmy Ball Game, and he says funny things. And I'll say this: nobody, nobody can see stuff on the field like Jim Edmond. I see. That's I get you true. on that. Just pick. Just talk about it more. Talk about the stuff that you see during the game a little bit more. Well, now you sound like people say that talk sports. I'm just saying, you know, if I'm going to watch, I have to be, I have to critique a little bit. All right, but now you sound like the people on the text line that say talk sports. That's right. Be careful. That's right. But hold on. Back paddle again. When there's there's a shot on, on the TV of an attractive woman, and then there's this kid. I look away. Who's got binoculars. I look away. And... Somebody makes a comment about this, and then Jimmy Ballgame goes something like, well, I don't know. I don't know what he's looking at. That's funny to me. <laughs> that part, and that time it was and, funny. And to me, look, when you toe the line of appropriateness, I find that funny. I like awkwardness. I like when people try to be a little uh, working blue, we'd call it. I appreciate that. Working blue? I love the hose. Yes. <sighs> what did you say? That? What did you just say? I <laughs> love the hose. <gasps> Oh Ho-hos? my God! Ho hos. Ever say that on the show again? What I'm saying. Oh, hi, blue. Randy. A little inappropriate. Right? Yeah. I. That part was funny. Hey. Yo, what up? Hey, great. Hey, let me ask you a question. There is uh, David Prime going to be missed more in the locker room than um, than uh, than his four scoring abilities for the Blues in the upcoming season? Yeah. That's, he was what else you got? <laughs> yeah, Randy. I mean, they're going to have to make up for some goals for sure. No, but I'm saying just the, just the intangibles he brought, you know, the chemistry, the team, yeah. you know, the whole the whole shebang. Who's gonna who's gonna fill that role there? Yeah, uh, the whole and, shebang. And, and, and and our thing is, uh, once Mozeliak uh, moves on out, and uh, I'll just stop calling myself Randy after he leaves, uh, then uh, is Gersh gonna be in charge, or or is that Tom Flores? Uh, I mean, the Tom Randy, Flores. whatever the, the director <laughs> of amateur scouting, is, is he gonna take over? I think I might. Uh, Tom Flores. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Right, that was great hey, Randy. Good material. I like Randy. He's the best. He's the best. Today was not his best call, though. Mosaliak? You got to think Gersh might get a get a job himself somewhere if he wants to if he wants to go I'm somewhere else. I'm not so else. sure that uh, right now that's what he wants That's to what do. I'm saying. Yeah. But I would think at this point in his career, he could get a general manager job or whatever it's called these days, president of baseball ops, where he could actually run the show somewhere else. So if you're Gersh and you like go interview with uh, some other team, are you like, 
yeah, that uh, that Goldschmidt and Arenado deal, those things, uh, that was my baby. Yeah. <laughs> That was all me. Mm-hmm. The way ball game can predict pitches before they are thrown is awesome. Jackie, now I know. I agree with that, man. Colby chimes in. B- BT talks about how bad he was, and Jimmy likes to talk about how good he was, is which is a big difference for me. Colby chimes in. That's why I like both of them, though. I get you. It's a good dichotomy. It's like a cheesesteak and a great cheese. Brad bread. is definitely the best, but nothing wrong with ball game. Sanderson. Edmund should send out a tweet like Joe Buck's last one. I think people would appreciate the self-awareness. Question. What does that mean? Cray, Cray, Langford chimed in. What does that mean? I don't know. Okay. Here's my question. If you made $86 million in your career, Mm -hmm. would you watch every baseball game? Would you even watch every Cardinals game? Or would you be chilling? Well, if I had a job. I wouldn't be. I would not. If I made $86 million, you think I'm really locked into every baseball game? I know. I know you're not. But if you're going to do. I know. If you. But if I had a job to do. And I'm going to do it. Like, I need to pay attention because I don't want to get chirped. And I want to, like, you know, yeah, I don't want to piss people He doesn't people care, up. though. I know. Well, Do you think he even knows about this? What, about the about, backlash? About the Twitter thing? I don't think he cares. Well, well, I, I know he, he doesn't care. But I would care about my I'd, – I'd have pride in my job. I would. Hell, we did – we worked for free and we had pride in our job, Charlie. What are we talking about? Hey, think little, about that. little trade. What's Working for t- free. What is the tweet? Wait, no, but did you get the on stuff or Twitter, did someone else get your trade stuff? What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> Some gift cards here and there? Play the drop, would you? Sorry, I'm stuck <laughs> on what did Buck tweet. I'm just get easy, easy, man. I'm just playing. Nate, what, I, I'm, I'm curious with that, too. I'm a big, strong guy. <laughs> All right, what's the tweet with Joe Buck? Uh, yeah, Jack great. Buck? Let what's us going know. on? Twitter the, probably didn't exist back then. The cat whisker one was the best last night, Sanderson. Oh, man, that's funny. Which drop did you want, Jimmy? You know, I was talking about. You know what he's doing. Trades that went in another direction than where they were uh, originally intended. That's I don't know, I don't know who he would pin that. <laughs> I think the best combo with Danny Mac is Brad Thompson. Edmonds is is not very yes, you do. not a very good color man. He says weird things too. I think Wayne Wright in the booth as a color man once he retires would be interesting thoughts. Yeah, Wayne, oh dude. I mean, just listen to him in the bullpen. That was awesome, by the way. We played that whole thing. He was great. And usually he probably he wouldn't do that, but now he is doing that. And he actually he learned something. He had some great quotes that you would read from, like, you know, Jordan Peterson or the something. The most unbelievable thing is he said, a routine is great until it becomes a superstition. Yeah. Which I thought was beautiful. And he said something about youth. What was this quote about? Your brain plays tricks on you, something that you are what you, your brain thinks. What your brain tells you you are, something like yeah. that. That one I'm not so sure I agree with. Because sometimes I'm like, God, I was good on the radio this morning. And then I listened and I was awful. <laughs> but then your brain at that point said, yeah, you're awful. So you got to listen to your brain. <laughs> it plays tricks on you, too. When, um, when Danny Mac is going, when is Danny Mac going national? He's a treat that many could appreciate his talent on a larger scale. Mitchie Boy chimed in. What's up, Mitchie? I'm sure he could do more. Ball game doing it to support all his ex-wives. He could oh, learn stop. a bit of humility from BT. BT all the way. Guess who that was from? Who Personal you, attack. Who do you think that was from? Was it from Sharon? Yeah. She's been up. She like was up that. early tweeting this morning. I don't like that. I don't like first <laughs> of all, Sharon. they're my they're my teammates. I would defend them. Yeah. Like I would defend you guys, except for Seth. And <laughs> Joke, Seth. It was a joke. Uh, he's you know, laughing and today. I'm telling you, I work with those are good guys. I mean, it's it's hard not to like working with those guys. Yeah. I think they both do a really good job. And as Charlie points out, as I tried to point out with the food analogy, they both have different flavors. That's all. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> nice to board ops. <laughs> Comedy is hard. It is funny that people are so so into critiquing the broadcast. I've just never been like that. I really haven't. I know I'm talking about it here. I just, I never really care. Because if you really watch a broadcast and it's bad, it annoys the hell out of you. Just turn the turn the volume off. No, I want to listen to what's going on, though. So now I got to turn the damn volume off because they suck? No, I'm going to bitch about that. Just like when we watch the NHL and, you know, I can't hear somebody because their voice is, you know, so, and I'm so like, what, tell, what? Tell me if I'm wrong. Yes, Something, you are. You know what I'm okay. talking about, Nate. So if yeah. something like this with ball game, it starts on social media like a lot of things do, and then it becomes a snowball, right? Everyone, hey, I can look at me. I'm, you know, I've, I've got nothing, but I can take a shot in front of a lot of people at a guy who's reached the highest levels at his profession, you know, as a player, 
and now I'm going to dunk on him. Dunk Watch on me. him. Dunk Watch on him. I'm going to dunk on him. And then so every game now, it's like, I'm going to dunk on it. Stop it. You know, like, well, I, I get WNBA. it. You're entitled to an opinion. You know, it's some, maybe it's not everyone's cup of tea. Maybe they like Thompson better. Maybe they like Edmonds better. The point is, or Ricky. this it becomes like a snowball where I think it, it's it's almost like even if he doesn't say anything even near questionable, there's going to be stuff I on know. that. And I feel, and I'm but glad we, he doesn't pay but attention. But we want our listeners to let it out. Let it out on the text line. We we want that. If you but have I hate in your say. heart, let it out. Let it out. Well, I'll read it. You know that. Cray Langford chime back in. Then we're going to go to break here. Save it for the hack riders, though. Should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he went off the other day. You know, he has that look in his eye when he walks in here. I'm like, oh, it's coming. <laughs> and he will love it, love it, and then bam. I want to see and a then, confrontation. By the way, your notes were great today. Great. Thank great. You. I'm going to read Thank every you single much. note that you typed out. <laughs> I don't ever want you to waste your time, ever. I want to oh see Nate God. hanging out at Bush, just kind of walk by the right. Charlie, we're going. We're, we're all hanging That's out at Bush. And I'm going to walk in with Nate. I, can, I just want to evaluate. No, I don't want any protection. No, I'll walk behind him Do like I'm think- not with him. I don't, you, do you think Nate would be afraid of walking by the writers? Anybody. I don't think he would. Would you say anybody. these things to his face? To Ben? Yes. Sure. I don't think you would. Oh, my word. How well do you do you know me? Charlie, if I was a gambling man. You're calling him a coward. Charlie, if I was a gambling man. You're down there, though, right? If I was a while. gambling man. It's minus 250. Yes, he would. I, had, I absolutely think he would. I have been thing. to a game on a credential this year maybe three times. I didn't want. Don't care. One was no. opening day. A couple of. I mean, they were all early on in the season. No, Charlie. Too. I don't want him to. I don't want him to. We want to be happy. We're happy here. We love everybody. But if I was a gambling man, I'd bet that Nate would. I just think he would. But I wouldn't like. I. I guess sometimes I probably do take it too far and get personal. That's probably not necessary. No, oh, you but for the, no, but you for the don't. thrill of the, you know, of the radio, radio sometimes you have to amplify it a bit. <laughs> How strong you want to you know, come do at I it? I truly guy. hate these people. <laughs> no, but it is despicable to me. Look, uh, I, look, I like the virtue signal as much as the next guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, I get it. You could disagree with a writer. Yeah. But you call them all hacks. You know, you <laughs> pigeonhole all of them together. To no, me, I that's don't. way overboard. Only the ones that uh, are mega lib. Oh, megas. Hoxie, oh. Hoxie is a nice guy. Mega. He obviously, you know, is a skilled writer to be in that. And it's like it's like the analyst in on uh, Bally's or maybe the sideline guy. We're out there in the public, so you're allowed to have your opinions, good or bad. I just Ted, don't think you call I'm that. I'm Hackman. You're Teddy. I'm Bailey. Does those sports. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't even know what that is. God. Nate, what is that? All right, time for some happy birthday shots. The celebrities that surely aren't watching. You're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> now that I heard, and that sounds good. <laughs> what was that from? Uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Good movie. I'm, God, is like, I'm going to be like Chris baby. Farley, but I'm going to set this up. So he's having a bad trip. Nothing's working out. This is Steve Martin. <laughs> and... He finally figures out a way to get home, and it's getting a rent-a-car to drive oh, all yes. the way back home. And he, he thinks he has it won, and he gets to the spot. The, the shuttle drops him off in this giant parking lot, and there's no car where it's supposed to be. And he has to walk back to the terminal, and he's getting himself in a lather on his way back, telling himself... You're messing with the wrong guy. And then she's like, <laughs> he's like, she's like not painting in the lady at the front desk. And that's at Lambert, by the way. Yes. Yeah, Remember so it was at Lambert. talking about her thank, it's Thanksgiving. Gobble, like gobble. A, yeah, yeah, great. I'm, I watched that. There's always One a movie. One of my favorites. There's always, and John Candy, too. And it's just, it's just so damn good. And then it's right so at the good. end, it tugs on your heart. I know. That's what I like. Thank you want to cry. That's what I like. God, is that a damn good movie. All right. You never seen that? I've seen. I can't quote it. I mean, I've seen it over the years. It's so damn good. It's timeless, just like Chevy Chase Man. Christmas Vacation. It's timeless. It's Thanksgiving time. I can't wait. I love that movie. Some people though can recite movie lines, and others. I mean, I'm terrible, awful, and some people just have the gift of be able to do it. And then when it goes right over people's heads that don't have the capability to do it, it's sort of like, uh, awkward. Yeah, I do that to people too. I'll say a line. Like a sexual tyrannosaurus or something. They'll be like, whoa, Jesus. I'm like, you didn't see Predator? <laughs> but some Lord. people take it too far, though, in the sense of, like, they expect you to know every Seinfeld reference. Sure, I've watched probably most Seinfelds over yeah. the years. But if they're like, 
They quote a line. Oh, you don't know that? It's from the the paper Season episode. Four. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know every. Yeah. And then they look kind of look down at you because you don't know every well, single should. reference. Well, Charlie. Do you, feel, do you feel that I did that with the uh, line from Plane Train? Because I didn't no, mean to. No, I was, I was just happy to recite it. Hey. No, listen. When we have a drop, I like to know. I don't even remember what I said. Yeah. I don't remember why I said things, let alone why you oh, would say man. something in a drop. So, Come on, man. I didn't even know that from a movie. <laughs> my, my other billion, favorite billion line from that movie that no one else would say it's their favorite is the uh, shower curtain ring guy <laughs> yeah. knows the motel clerk and he's trying to get rooms and he introduces him to Ned Page or whatever. The, <laughs> and so he introduces him and he goes, nice to know you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name, so here's what Joe Buck, Cray Cray chimes in back in. The text line's blowing up, 855-282-8255. Get him in. Positive, negative, I don't give a damn. You know that. Joe Buck chimes in uh, on Twitter, I guess he's referring to that tweet. He goes, thank God, capitalized. He always rooted against my team. Always. Probably still is. Good thing he had a famous dad because that for sure, capitalized, kept him from doing it for 26 years. The devil must have called and said the term expired. Do better, MLB on Fox. I'll hang up and listen. What's That's he mean? Joe Buck. So, so he's joking. Yeah, he's joking. Oh. So here's the thing. Joe Buck, and it is true because <laughs> I've seen it in my own family. Joe Buck is a really nice guy who doesn't care who wins the game he's broadcasting. Yeah. He really doesn't. Like, I know he likes the Cardinals, but people in St. Louis think he has a bias. So I have family that's Phillies fans, family that's Yankees fans, and every one of those fan bases in my family thinks Joe Buck roots against their team. And I have to tell him he doesn't. Yeah. He really doesn't. He's trying to do his job. So Joe Buck is having fun with that because every single fan base thinks Joe Buck is out to get their team, and it's not true. Royals fans despise Joe Buck because uh, that was the year they lost to the Giants when Bumgarner was, you know, hurling like he was circa Bob Gibson. Yeah. And Royals fans just could not. They thought, oh, Can I give he's a hot... totally rooting for the Giants. Can I give a hot take out? Please. Danny Mac's better than Joe Buck. Wow. He is, man. <laughs> Joe Buck doesn't do anything for me. I like him, and he came on our show, but I don't. I don't know. Wow. De- dead serious. Not doing it because of this. I don't need to throw hot takes out. I think I'll Danny Mac. Joe better. Buck would say, I "Danny think Mac is right there." I look. Joe Buck is one of the best ever. So was his father. I. Joe Buck his is dad's a different great. story. Yeah. Joe Buck is great, but I think Danny Mac is he's better. Great. I think he's better. Hmm. I'm just saying. It. That's a hot take. You don't think so? They're both great. You don't think so, Sir Nathaniel? Like little gee, rocket you man. The, <laughs> You see the little ink back who's, there? Who's better on this show, Charlie or me? Oh! <laughs> well, you're not really what? on the show oh, very much, so. Oh, Lordy <laughs> B. Well, Charlie's been pretty good for the last six days. Well, and what's that? I'll tell you what. Oh, Manny escapes, we... throws. Oh, Tyree man. caught. <laughs> what was that? That was me impersonating Joe Buck. Oh, see, Seth agreed. Me and Seth agreed I hope on Joe a Buck calls more. in. I hope he's listening. <laughs> Play that right one now. more time. Joe, Play that one more time. Call in. Play that one Manning more time. Manning escapes, throws. Oh, Tyree caught. I know. Joe, if you're Seth. listening, call in. I want to see what these guys do when you uh, get on the line. He's kind of I was risky. Risky. I was... No, he's not. Yes, he is. He didn't know if the ball was caught. The guy no, caught it against uh, his helmet. He thought uh, agree with Eli Seth. was also potentially uh, blown down, right? Uh, uh, Wasn't that part of it? What, on the Tyree play? Wasn't part of that play that a lot of people thought forward progress that in terms he of Eli scrambling. Manning was already wrapped up and maybe they could have blown that dead? I thought that was part of that play. I'm just, I know the defender got a hold of him, but but it wasn't long enough, I don't think, I for the play to be called Blunded. He but. didn't have much emotion on that. He didn't, didn't know like if it, it was caught. I just didn't like it. 